In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brethren, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these pastoral celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. All time belongs to Him and all the ages. To Him be glory and power through every age forever. Amen. By his holy, and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of this glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy night, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthily, among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, why clean the record of our ancient sinfulness? These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld, our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, 
O charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault that earned so great, so glorious our Redeemer. O truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear brethren, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past 
saved his people, and in these the last days has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image, In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. 
and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. Verbum Domini. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading 
from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, both of you stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horn in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yireh, hence people now say, on the mountain of the Lord we'll see. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. Verbum Domini.
let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption through the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham, father of nations, as once you swore, grant we pray that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff and with hand over outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before the dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. Verbum Domini.
by the power of your right hand. Now you bring about as the salvation of the nations to the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carn carnelian and your foundations in sapphire. I will make your battlements of rubies and your gates of carbuncles and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established far from the fears of oppression where destruction cannot come near you. Verbum Domini. Oh. 
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledge to the patriarchs by reason of their faith. And through sacred adoption, increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. Nervum Domini.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveil the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom, had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where are length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him trembling. Before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. Verbum Domini.
Let us pray. O God, who constantly increases your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new, a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Verbum Domini.
mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you plan from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. Verbum Domini. Thank you. 
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might also might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord.
Please be seated. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Since even last Advent, most especially since Ash Wednesday, at last, we take part tonight in our Lord's resurrection. We have followed him through the desert we have followed him to his death on Calvary. And now tonight, we are to know that his death is only a doorway to life. Everything we do tonight is full of beautiful symbolism. The new fire struck from a stone points to Christ bursting forth from his rocky tomb. The paschal candle, the light of Christ, illumines the darkness of night, overcomes the darkness of death. We follow this light where he leads us, into the church. Where his light spreads, it grows until the entire church is illuminated. And so it is that within the church he established, his divine life spreads and grows within his adopted children through the sacraments, those means he gave us of bestowing his sanctifying grace. We heard of the exuberance of God's love for his people in the exultant. All that God did for his chosen people then, all that Jesus has done for us now, the true Paschal Lamb by whose blood we are saved. In a few minutes, we will bless the baptismal waters the prayers of this blessing, mysterious and beautiful, speak of the font being the womb of Holy Mother Church, made fruitful by the Spirit of Christ, from which new members of the Church are born. And the Church tonight cannot wait to baptize with this newly blessed water. Right away, she wants to demonstrate its power. Talk about the moment we've been waiting for. These catechumens, these elect, have been waiting for this night. They've been preparing for this night. Aided by your prayers, they have fought for this night. At last, their souls will be washed in the blood of the Lamb. And we too, already baptized, will renew our baptismal promises. We understand what we do. We know that through baptism we die and go into the tomb with Christ, so that with him we may rise to new life. Each of us is a vessel of his grace. And on this holy night, the crucified and risen Christ desires to fill these vessels to the brim. May your desire to be filled with his grace be evident in the promises that you renew. And then being sprinkled once again with the waters of baptism, we will celebrate the Eucharist, the Mass of the Resurrection. Once more, as we have so often done, we offer up Jesus, the pure and perfect Lamb of God. We offer ourselves with him 
And tonight we truly understand this offering. We understand the meaning of sacrifice, that the grain of wheat must indeed go into the ground and die if it is to bring forth fruit. Tonight we understand this, for tonight death has been destroyed as Jesus rises glorious from the tomb. He still lives among us, present in the tabernacle. He is still made present here upon our altar, where the mysteries of his death and resurrection are renewed. Tonight remember the words of the risen Jesus, Peace be with you. Be not afraid. If death itself has been destroyed, for what will we be afraid? May the risen Lord, whose true presence you will receive this night, fill you with all joy, grace, and blessings of this Easter season. May you be as bright and as glorious as he was on that first Easter morning. Through the power of these eternal mysteries, may you be ever mindful of the love Jesus has for each of you, that he gave his life for you, rose from the dead, so that you may have life eternal. Let those who are to be baptized in Christ please stand. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these, our brothers and sisters, in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. Sancti Apostoli, orate pro nobis. Sancte Luca, ora pro nobis. Sancte 
marching. Sancte Barnaba. Sancta Maria Magdalena. Sancte Stephane. Sancte Inati Antiochene. Sancte Laurenti. Sancte Vasili. Sancte Francisce. Sancta Catharina. Sancta Teresia. Sancte Ioannes Canci. Sancti et Sancte Dei, ora te pronom, propitius esto, libera nos domine, ab omni malo, libera nos domine, ab omni peccato, libera nos domine, a morte perpetua, libera Per incarnationem tuam, per mortem et resurrectionem tuam, liberanos domine, per effusionem spiritus sancti, liberanos domine, peccatores, te rogamus audino, Selectus per gratiam baptismi regenerare dignieris, te rogamus audino, Iesu fili Dei vivi, te rogamus audino, Christe audino, Christe audino, Christe ex audino. Be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble servants may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power through Christ our Lord. power, accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the water, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice, and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with his blood, 
And after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, go forth, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image, and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this fault, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. My dear elect, before you receive the waters of baptism, you must state your resolve. And so I ask, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alyssa, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Brett, I baptize you in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Shana, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ermelin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Himala, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Devon, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Tuan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Richard, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Miles, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Max, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that you may have everlasting life. Godparents, please come forward to give to the newly baptized the light of Christ.
you have been enlightened by Christ, walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Please stand. Dear brethren, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him to newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is finished, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
May those to be confirmed please stand. My dear newly baptized and those already born again in Christ by baptism, you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit which you are to receive will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out this Holy Spirit on these members of our faith to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. May those to be confirmed please come forward and kneel. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Orate fratres ut memex vestem sacrificati habere fiat nate deum patrum oripotentem. Sucipia dominus sacrificium divinus tuis, ad laure gloria nominis sui, ad utilitatum corpore nostra, totius que ecclesiae sui sancte. Sucipe quesimus domine, preces publi tui cum oblationibus hostiarum, Ud pascalibus initiate mysteris, are tenitatis nobis medelam te operande perficiem, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Dominus obiscus. Salutare, te quidem domine omni tempore confiteri, sed in hac potissimum nocte gloriosus predicare, cum pasca nostrum immolatus est Christus. Ipse edem verus est agnus, qui absolit peccata mundi, qui mortem nostrum moriendo duct extruxi, et vita resurgendo reparavi, qua propte propusis pascalibus gaudis, totus in orbe terarum mundus exulta, Sed et superne virtutes, arque angelice potestates, himnum gloriae tue concinut, sine fine dicentes.
Santissime Pater, Periesum Christum Prium Tuum, Dominum Nostrum, Subliges Rogamus Ac Petimus, Ute Ac Cepa Abeas, Et Benedicta Sec Dona, Ec Munera, Ec Sancta Sacrificia Illibata, In primis quae tibi offermus pro ecclesia tua sancta catholica, quam pacificare custodire, adunare et rege dineris, tota ove terarum, unicum pamelo tuo papa nostro Francisco, et antistite nostro Blasio, et omnibus orthodoxis aque catholicae et apostolicae fidere critoribus. Momento domine famalorum famalorumque tuarum. Et omnium circumstantium quorum tibi fides conita est et nota devotio, pro quibus tibi offermus, ver qui tibi operunt hoc sacrificium lauris, pro se suisque omnibus, pro veremcione animarum suarum, pro spe salutis et incolumitatis sue, tibi que redunt vota sue eterno Deo vivot et vero. Comunicantes et noctum sacratissimam celebrantes resurrectionis Domini nostri Iesu Christi, Secundum carnum, sed et memoriam venerantes in primis gloriose semper virginis Mariae genetricis eustem Dei et Domini nostri Iesu Christi, sed et beati Iosef eustem virginis fonsi, et beatorum apostolorum ac martorum tuorum Petri et Pali, Andrei, Iacobi, Ioannis, Tome, Iacobi, Filippi, Bartholomei, Matthei, Simonis et Darii, Lene, Clete, Cementis, Existi, Corneli, Cipriani, Lorenzi, Crisogoni, Ioannis et Pali, Cosme et Domiani, et Omnium Sanctorum Tuorum, Quorum Meritis Precibusque Conceras, ut in Omnibus Plexionis Tue Muniamur Exilio, per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. Hanc igitur ablationum servitutis nostre, sedecunte familiae Tue, quam tibio fermus pro is quoque, quos regenerare dignatus es ex aqua et spiritus sancto, tribuns eis remissionem omnium peccatorum, quesmus domne ut placatus ac cipias, diesque nostras in tua pace disponas, aque ab eterna damnationem nos erpi et in lectorum tuam iubias grege numerare, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Quam oblationem tu Deus in omnibus quesmus, benedicta, ad scripta, rata, rationablem, acceptablemque facide digneris, ut nobis corpus et sanguis, fiat delictissimi, filitui, Domine nostri, Iesu Christi. Qui pride quam pateretu, accepit panem in sanctas ac venerables manus suas, et elevatis oclis in celum, a te deum patrum sum omnipotentem, tibi gratias agens benedixit, regit dedique discipli suis dicem, Accipiter manucate ex hoc omnes, hoc est enem corpus meum, quod provo bistra detum. Quam genatum est, accipiens ed un precalum caricem, in sanctas ac venerables manus suas, item tibi gratias agens benedixi, dedique discipli suis dicens, accipiter bibite ex eo omnes, Ic est edem cadex sanguinis mei, novi ed etene testamenti, qui provobis et promotis secundetu in remissionem peccatorum. Hoc fac 
facite in meam commemorazione. Mysterium Fidei Mortem Tumor Anxia Mortemia Et Tumor Resurrectionem Convitemum Cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Preceptis salet haribus moniti, et divin institutione formati audemus dicere. Pate noste, qui es in celis, sanctifice tu. Quit. 
Jesmus Domini, Domine ab omnibus malis, and a propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut hope misericordiae tuae adiuti, et a peccato simus semper liberi, et ab omne perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam sper, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. Quia tu es regnum et potes fas, et gloria in secula. Domine Jesu Christe, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinco vobis, pacem meam da vobis, Ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tuae, eam que secudum voluntatum tuam pacificare et quadignare digneris, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum.
let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close. May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever.